So the following is an introduction to using widgets with the Jupyter Notebook. This follows from the IPy widgets package, and you can see the documentation that's listed here. So I'm just going to go some through some, the list of widgets that they provide and show a little bit of the usage and also what they look like visually. So the first thing we do is import the package IPy widgets as WG, and then from IPython.display import display. There's several different kinds of widgets that we'll go through. <coughs> These include numeric widgets, um, booleans, selection widgets, string widgets, and a few others. <coughs> um, here I'm setting each of these different widget types and assigning them to their own uh, variables. And there's 10 of them in this list. And then once we've got them all, we can use this display function to show them on the screen. So in general, there's a number, each, each widget will have its own values, although they tend to, to be fairly consistent among the different widgets. So there's a value, a min, max, step size. So for the float slider, with the default value, then the minimum and maximum allowed values, the increment size, and we can put a readout <coughs> 3F to correspond with the three digits that we're showing, and a little descriptor, which will show up below. So if we do this for all of them, you can see we have a float slider. You can edit the values, and here I've included three decimal places, or you can come in and set the values <coughs> uh, explicitly in the box. There's an integer version of this. There's IR sliders. There's with a range, a range slider for integers and floats. These progress bars simply display a bar showing a progress between the values shown. So those are given here. <coughs> the integer version is starting at 5 and going from 0 to 10. And then there's a float version. You can make a text box to enter integer values in the text box. Uh, 10. You can change a uh, text box for floats. And again, that will let you specify a step size that's allowed to be entered. You can do a bounded. Uh, integer box where you have min and max values. So here the min is 0 and the max is 10. So if I try to enter something like 12, 12, it defaults to the maximum. And if I enter something below 0, minus 5, then it um, goes back to 0. So I've f enforced a bound. And you can do the same kind of thing with the float. Minus 5.5 goes back to 0, 5.7, etc. So once we've defined all those, we can get the values. If we change the slider here, 3.14, we can get the values by simply calling our variable, which is f underscore s for the float slider, dot value. And here I'm storing that in a variable called y. Um, for the float text box, we have f underscore t dot value. So if we change the slider to be 5.557, and the uh, float text to be 3.28084. Then when we run this cell, we can see that we get the values that we just entered. So we have direct access to the values that the user entered. Uh, the Boolean widgets are similar. So there's a toggle button, a checkbox that returns uh, the value is either true or false, whether it's checked. There's a valid widget that can tell you whether or not some occurrence was valid. There are uh, selection widgets. So here we can have a drop down box where we can select values. You can also have a drop down box that will select that will associate uh, names to values using a dictionary. So uh, we can have a radio button. We can change the value of the radio button. Selections. Uh, selection slider that we can change between different options toggle buttons you can select you can have a box that allows you to make multiple selections hit command enter to select them or control enter to select them and you can get the values like before so my radio selection equals radio dot value so here's my radio thing uh, radio object and I can go radio dot value and then print it and sure enough I've selected run if I go hit motorcycle then changes to motorcycle. So pretty slick. Uh, string widgets. 
uh, text boxes, text areas, some equation label, HTML formatted uh, label, which is kind of cool. Uh, a regular button, you can insert a picture. There's a play button, a color picker. So I can go down and check, click on the color wheel here. Um, there's a layout widget. There is an accordion. It's kind of cool. You can select between different kind of widgets and put them in an accordion style. And um, this one gives us a list or a tab. And we can have different tabs across here. So lots of different options for selecting and using widgets. One thing that might be useful if you're creating a graphical interface would be to maybe take all of these things here, copy that, and we'll just go in and make a, a new text file and we'll call this um, widget.py and then we can paste all of that code in here and then um, maybe take those things out and put them in widgets.py also and if we then save this Let's see, and maybe we will um, take these out and then save it. Then we can see that in the in the Python notebook, if we cut these cells out, then we could if we paste in the display, then we can oops, let's clear the kernel. We'll just restart this and clear output. Okay. We can go import from widget import star, and then we can display all these things again. So the point is that we can offload all of this widget code to some other file so that it's not um, in the way of our nice uh, IPython, um, our nice IPython interface for entering the values of the widgets that we wanted to. And we can use we can do this to set a nice um, graphical interfaces for uh, for Jupyter. So that's a quick intro to using some basic widgets and a little bit of code and I'll post a link to the code itself in the description. Thanks.